Hey everybody, what's up? Today I wanted to talk to you about the Fetch API and how we can use it to bring data from a server to our web app or website. And also how we can use the dot then syntax and the async await as well and what the difference of these two are. Then we are also going to look at some loops that are usually used with, with this Fetch API and how these three loops behave mostly in the same way and what's the difference between these for each for loop and map. If you're a beginner, you're more than welcome to follow along. Otherwise, just sit down, relax and enjoy. I'll start the project with an empty folder, right click on it. I'm using Windows, so it's going to say open with Visual Studio Code. I'll create an index HTML file and I'm going to hit the exclamation mark to have an HTML boiler plate. I'm going to add a fetch API as a title and also as a heading, heading one. I will also add a div with a class of data. We're going to use that later for, for populating the HTML. I will also launch the Visual Studio Live server. Pretty basic stuff. I'll also add a JavaScript JS and just to test, I will say console.log test and link these two files together. Then I'm arranging my working space, putting the Visual Studio to one side and the browser to the right side of the screen, like so. This is really useful because you can have a look at your code on the left and what's going on in the browser on your right. Now that we're ready, I'm going to JSON placeholder and here you can do some fetch API requests and I'm going to be using this snippet of code. You have different types of data that you can request. I'm just going to copy this and paste it on our Visual Studio code. So if I hit save, it sends a fetch request and it logs the data to the console. Based on our URL, we can see that it gave us only one to do from the to do list. But we are going to be using the albums endpoint. And this gives us 100 albums from this URL. So I'm going to copy this URL and replace this here with a variable that I'm going to declare as URL equals to what I just copied. I'm going to pass this variable in the fetch API function. Now you can see that 100 items were brought to our console, 100 albums in this case. We can also see that uh, the, stat the status code is 200 and we can see all the details here clicking on the network tab. We can also see the request and the response we got from from the server and the request is what we sent and we have some details of our own the information of our own machine now we can also see that the time that it took to to fulfill that request and we can uh, click in here with this tool we can pretend to be on a 4g uh, connection and as you can tell it takes a little longer to to make this request and we can even make it slower by clicking don't use cache which is uh whatever what is already downloaded on our on our browser so we can click don't use cache and use really slow connection as and as you can see it takes almost four seconds to fulfill the the promise to bring the data so we have to cater we have to take care of that into consideration we're going to see this later and hopefully you'll understand why i'm showing you this So let's create a function so we can have things a little bit more organized and we're going to create a function like fetcher or something like that. You can call it whatever you want. And then I'm going to execute the function by calling it up here, fetcher and parentheses. This seems to be doing it the exact same thing, but actually it's a little bit more organized in functions and then executing that function. What I'm going to do now is selecting this div and saving it on a constant that I'm going to call data container, something like that. And this is going to be equal to document query selector. And I'm going to select this class by saying dot data. So this is the div that we are going to be using. And we're going to use inner HTML equals to hello from JS, for example. So we know that we're populating that part of the HTML using JavaScript. 
So I'm going to run this just to, just to, te just to test it on this uh, li one liner. I'm going to make two lines, add these squirrely brackets and then run that. And we can see that it works. Now, let me show you something. I'm going to now create a function called to HTML. So I'm, I know I'm going to use this function to populate our HTML. So I'm going to cut this and put it there. And then I'm adding this console log just to make sure that the function ran and to know exactly when it did. So I'm going to copy this and paste it underneath. And as you can see, it, the first thing it ran was this function. So if we check our network, we see that it took uh, quite a few seconds to, for this to run. And we can see this even clearer if I make the connection slower. So as you can tell, the slower the connection, the longer it takes for the data to, to be printed out in our console. That means that we need to call this function and wait for the data to arrive. And as you can see here, I call it as a callback function almost. And what, as you see, even if it takes longer, we can see that first it calls the data into our browser and then it runs the the function called to html regardless of how much time it takes this function will always wait until everything is done now in this function if i do data const.innerhtml equals json it says that it doesn't know what this json refers to so I need to pass it as an argument in, in this function. And we can see that the data arrives here, not in the good format though. So uh, we are passing this, this as, a, as an argument. Now, let me put this in a, in a one line. And this argument that we're passing, we're catching in line 13, can be called whatever you want. It could be called JSON, it could be called data. This could even be called a D and that's fine too. I'm just going to keep it as JSON just to be very clear. Now, this is where the loops come in. We're going to be using three different methods or three different ways of completing the, the data in our HTML. Let's start with a for each loop. I'm going to say JSON dot for each, and we're going to be using one element. In this case, we know that it's one album. I'm just going to call it E. As a, as a general term because it's just one element so for each element i'm going to append this to our html we still get the object but if we say e.title we get only the title for each time it runs so i'm going to add a quick uh, break line and as you can tell we get all the data inside our html this is not well formatted so we still need to do something about this Instead of using this very basic formatting, I'm going to use the back ticks and jump to a new line. I'm going to add a paragraph tag. So now I say e.title and now we get the title for each element. And I'm going to replace title by ID. So now we get the ID and the title in each of these. Now let's go back to the HTML and let's create a new a new file and we're going to we're going to do we're going to add some css i'm going to copy and paste it cuz this is going to be really briefly just to give us some formatting i'm just linking style css to our html file i'm going to copy and paste some things and i'm going to explain really quickly this is resetting the the browser's values and adding some background to the body color and font family as you can tell as you can see here and then i'm going to center the text right up here then i'm gonna wrap these in an article tag then i'm going to add some css to to see it a little bit better it's just some simple display flex and then some color padding and margin to each article now we can see it better. Let's take a step back and see what's going on. We're calling this function. We're waiting 
further response, waiting for the JSON to be ready, and then we're calling the to HTML function, which inside has a for each loop. Now I'm going to be showing you what would happen if we wanted to use a different loop, which is called map. This will return an array. Now for each element, we're going to be pushing this element into the array that we are going to be returning. So I'm going to say return.e. I'm going to save this in a variable called HTML, and we're going to be using this variable to later put it in, a, in our HTML page. You can call this variable whatever you want. As you see, we get pretty much the same result. So here we need to say return.e title. And what you can see here is the previous result we had before. So I'm going to copy all these back ticks and put it there. And we get pretty much the same thing. The only problem is that we have a comma in between. That's kind of annoying. So let me console.log this out. And you see, we have all these values separated by a comma. So to prevent this comma to appear in our from appearing in our HTML, I'm going to go and hit join and leave a white space. You can add whatever you want here, space, hello, whatever. In this case, we only need blank. As you see, these two give us the exact same thing. The only problem is that these two loops will iterate through all of the elements of whatever we get, regardless of how many they are. If they are 10, fine. If they are 5,000, that might take a little more. So let me show you the for loop. For this loop, we need to write a little bit more, but it's more controllable in the sense that we can control how many articles we want to post in this case. So look at this, we start with an index and then we, we say that we're going until the length of all our array is done. And for each time it goes, the index, for each iteration, the index will be bigger. Now what we can do, we can also say, instead of going all the way to the end, show me only 20 or two or three articles and they will show up in our, in our, on our site. Now we can also say, start from from article 10 and go all the way to 15 and that's a great way for using for pagination and that's a little bit more advanced so we're not going to talk about that but just wanted to let you know that you have this control over what you what you do with the for loop i'm going to say go from 0 to 4 and as you can tell it only show us four or six articles as you can see here I am going to add here a quick note that this is all, all the data, that means all the articles, they are looped through using the for each loop. And this is the exact same thing, but this time using a variable and using the map loop. Now, the last version that I'm showing you, it only gives us a controlled part of the data. So we can say only 10 articles, only four articles, and starting from zero, from the third, from the 10th, whatever. Now let's have a look at this function dot then notation. We are waiting for the response and then we're waiting for the JSON to be ready. But there's a lot of people who don't like this kind of things because they say that it can get messy real quick. So we have the async await notation. I'm just going to say then notation and let's talk about a little bit what async await is, which is very much used in, in many, in many cases. I'm going to start by declaring uh, a variable called response and I'm going to say this is equal to await and I'm going to do the fetch API function that we used before. Of course, this is not going to work just like that. We need to add a word which is async to this function just to indicate that we can do await. Now we get all the same response we got before. I'm just logging in, logging out to the console, the response, 
So what we can do then is get the JSON data. And to, to do that, I'm going to declare a variable called JSON. And this is going to be equal to pretty much the same thing as we did before. The await the response.json method. And I'm going to console.log the JSON data that we get from it. Just as we did before, now I'm going to call this, this to HTML function and pass this JSON data. And now we are using this async syntax, which some people prefer, you know, some people don't use it, but you can use both if, if they both, if you like the dot then convention, that's fine too. With this kind of construction, our code is a lot neater and it's, I think it's very clear to read. Now, the only problem here is that we're not checking if there is something wrong with the data. So we can try and do something about this. Let me show you. Some people do the response dot OK, and they check if this is true or false. Now, uh, as you as I showed you before in our in our response, we get a 200 status saying that everything went OK. Now, if there is a problem, like for example, uh, I do a fetch to, to an endpoint that gives us a 404 error, you see the 200 still is present in our code. So what, I, what we need to do is it's better to, to do a try and catch. And this is what, what I will try to show you now. Look, in the console, we see that every, uh, there were some problems by getting this wrong URL. So let's try the, the try and catch method for a minute. So I'm going to cut all this. I'm going to try to do something and then catch if there is any, any error. And here I'm going to say throw, which is a convention to create a new error. So I'm going to say new error. So in light in line eight, I'm going to try something. And if something goes wrong, Number, uh, line 11 will be executed. I'm going to say console.log hello. As you see, console is not well spelled, so it gives me an error and it throws it in the console. Now you can also say console.log error in the catch part, and as you see, it runs this 11 line. Now, what I like to do is to add a little comment for myself. For example, the fetcher function failed. So I know that there is a function called fetcher and this is the one that is giving me problems. So I will now try to figure this out what to debug this. And now you, we see that it runs the hello thing. Now, if I try to do the what we were doing before the fetch function, it will throw this error. But if the URL is wrong, then the the line 13, the ca the catch will will be will be run, and we will say the fetcher function failed. So that is a neater, I think, way of getting any mistakes that you may have. And in this way, you have a much cleaner and leaner code that you can share with other programmers. And I think it's a lot easier to understand. And you can use the for loop for each loop or the map loop, and then do the dot then syntax or if you want to the async await syntax and you can also add some try and catch which is just a really really neat and cool way of writing your code and even impress some possible recruiters out there i hope this little guide helped you with the fetch api and if you liked it don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you're interested in more stuff like this see you later bye